Geralt versus Sauron. This is a not traditional comparison of characters because one is a combination of modern and classic fantasy, and that is Geralt, while the other is pretty much a pure execution of classic fantasy villains, and of course that is Sauron. So jumping into the seven categories, we have origin, role, development, interest for the reader, relationships, who would win in a fight, and who would do better in the other's world. Kicking it off with origin. I've said this before, and I will say it again. Geralt's origin is not the most flushed out. We just kind of vaguely know Know how he got to be where his where he is in the first book and it's a very good vague origin and I think if you flush it out more it might actually harm his character so I'm not taking away from Geralt in that aspect because we need to believe this guy is such a emotionless type character that if you had a flushed out origin it could really harm that but when comparing it to one of the best villain origins in all of fantasy, I don't think there's much of a competition there. Sauron's origin is huge on the impact it has in the Lord of the Rings as a whole. Um, yes, it's never super first person or flushed out in any grandiose way, um, but you can't argue that it isn't something that has a real importance, not only for the Lord of the Rings, but for the fantasy genre as a whole. So for the first point, I'm going to fairly heavily lean Sauron. For the second point, development, obviously I'm leaning Geralt. I've made it clear that Sauron's development, well, we never really sit in his shoes, and it's delivered not in the smoothest way possible in The Lord of the Rings and the Cimmerillion together. Uh, I just don't find it easy to give him ever that point. But at the same time, Geralt is one of the biggest heavyweights in this entire tournament for development. He is a wonderful character to follow as he goes through self-discovery and actually changes as he kind of moves through the story and understands himself and his role in this world better. So Geralt does get this point um, almost by default, but I'm not in any way talking down about his development. It is one of the best I've ever read. So yes, Geralt gets the second point. Now we have role they play in the world they are in. This is really hard, and I know you might be thinking like, oh, Sauron is one of the biggest roles of all time. You can't not give him this point. Yes, but his role is always kind of vague in the distance as some kind of just wider threat. And I think it's a really good execution of that kind of role. But comparing that to Geralt, whose role is much smaller, but actually given to the reader in such a cleaner package and something that you can enjoy so much more purely uh, and in depth, it's, it's hard to really say one that is classic and has so much weight and is very ominous and good at the job it's supposed to do versus one that in its pure execution is so beautiful and something that's so great. I have a hard time giving this point to either one because they're just prime examples of two different ways you can execute a role and they're pretty much the best examples of how you can do one for an over-the-top evil bad guy villain and a main hero. So I'm going to go ahead and call this point a wash because I think for their perspective purposes they're on the same level. And now we have interest for the reader. I gave this point to Sauron in the last round super easily because his mythos is fascinating. I think it's one of the best executions of just having an ominous, interesting character in the distance of all time. Geralt, though, is in terms of relationships and internal development and just presence, one of the most interesting kind of dark ranger types in fantasy, in my opinion. There's a reason the Witcher series is so highly regarded and the franchise is still thriving so well after all these years. Uh, I can't wait for the TV show that's coming out about it, apparently. But I, again, they're just such vast, they're just so vastly different in execution, but done with the same level of almost near perfection that it's, it's hard to give a point. I'm not gonna go do two washes in a row, though, after really kind of taking some notes on this. I'm, gonna, I'm just leaning Geralt a little bit because I think in terms of difficulty of execution, uh, maintaining Geralt's interest when he is originally presented as someone who is such a motionless character was really difficult but still so well done by the author. So I'm, I'm giving it based off difficulty of execution to Geralt on this one. Now we have relationships. I've said this before, Sauron does not really have relationships. Yes, again, you can go for Cimmerillion and say that there's some stuff there, but it's never an in-person, flushed out, 
deep dynamic relationship. You're just kind of told things. And I, I won't give points for that because it's not very hard to execute. I think the concepts are awesome, but execution of those concepts, minimal. Geralt, on the other hand's relationships, again, some of the best I've ever read in fantasy. He is huge in how he impacts the series with his relationships and how he as a character really grows uh, through those relationships. I think relationship, I'm saying this word a lot, is the most important factor for the Witcher series. Having these characters pull and tug and help each other grow is really where the heart of the Witcher world is. And so for that reason, I'm very comfortable giving this one to Geralt. I think he raises the bar for other authors uh, when it comes to this category. People should look at how it's done for Witcher to see how they should try to integrate the same level of execution for their own writing. And now we have who would win in a fight. I've made it clear before, Geralt's plot armor is stupidly crazy thick. This is Sauron though, so no. <laughs> Geralt may actually be able to last a little bit of time against Sauron, uh, but when it comes to actually physically being able to kill and forever get rid of, no, uh, he will certainly not be able to stop Sauron. The only reason Sauron was able to be defeated before was of a kind of accident, uh, arrogance, I would say, and I don't think he would ever make the same mistake again. Uh, I would go ahead and easily say that Sauron takes the fight point by a lot. Though I don't think Geralt would be easily corruptible. That's just me, because his wants and desires aren't so huge. Uh, I don't know. That'd be interesting. That's a whole other video. Could Geralt be corrupted by the ring? Yes, he could, but I think it'd be an interesting, difficult corruption. And now we have who would do better in the other's world. Now, if you remember, this point is about who could really live the life they want to live to the fullest in the other's world. Sauron in The Witcher, there are many other very powerful beings that Sauron would have to actually contend with to a certain degree. He'd probably come out on top every single time, but it would actually be maybe a bit of a struggle, especially since he's having to start from zero. He would corrupt and grow in power, but it would take time. Geralt, on the other hand, would have almost immediate payoff in the Middle Earth. He would be able to just kind of start killing and just head in the right direction and oh boy, Boy, here I go killing again, fulfilling contracts left and right. I'm sure he would have a great relationship with the elves and things like that. He'd basically be a much more bloody and down-to-earth gritty killer than a uh, version of Aragorn. He would be someone who I think would build a great reputation for himself and have a very successful hunting career in Middle-earth. But when time went on and maybe he got involved in some more difficult quests, I think he could start being hampered quite a bit. So I think Sauron, biggest chance of failure at the beginning, and then success later on if he succeeds, while Geralt would have great success for a while until maybe he gets involved in something he shouldn't. And we all know Geralt's willing to pick up a contract that might be out of his league. So I'm actually gonna call this one a wash because I think they have equal chances of failure just at different stages. But yes, Geralt gets the victory here. And I'll go over why in a sec. So for me, Geralt's something special. Um, he is a combination of the best characteristics of classic and modern fantasy. He's really written in a way where it feels like classic fantasy, this higher epic thing, this escapism in its most pure form, while also having the best traits of modern fantasy in terms of development, a strong personality, uh, really great relationships that help flush him out and build him as a character. And I really do think it's wonderful how well this is done. And I'm really curious to see uh, in the future if Geralt would really help shape fantasy because if it was my opinion, if it was my choice, I would have basically the Wheel of Time level world building with Geralt level relationships being a really strong and inf influencing feature in future fantasy. I really want these two things to help authors because it's two categories I'm seeing suffer a lot with lower in fantasy. Yes, we have some of the best fantasy books ever coming out right now, but even some really great series suffer in some aspects. Uh, Lightbringer, for example, for me, really needs a little bit better world building happening in terms of detail. 
um, and relationship. I'd love for Gavin's relationships to have the more depth and complexity that maybe Geralt's has. Um, that's just kind of a side tangent there, but I just want to give a lot of praise for the execution of the Witcher series as a whole. Uh, I hope you guys like the video, like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. I really appreciate the recent bump in Patreons. You guys are wonderful and helping me turn this hobby into more of a real thing in my life, which is so awesome. Uh, I appreciate it so much. <laughs> you don't even know. Um, but have a great one, y'all. Peace.